I literally look like Casper the Ghost, blending into the background. Anyway, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Paul Holden Details channel. Why on earth am I in my lounge again? Well, there's a very, very good reason. I've been ill for the last month and a half, getting on for two months now. Caught this rotten cold. Me and my wife got it, flu-like symptoms. Yeah, it's not that, it's not the dreaded, yeah, it's not that. We tested, we're fine, but we've been very, very ill and it's been dreadful weather and we've had a few issues with family and stuff going on, private stuff. So yeah, I'm back on YouTube and uh, this video is kind of a revisit. If you remember the Mini, the Track Mini, the road going Track Mini, does a bit of both. Mainly Track, more about that later on in the video. We're gonna talk about that during the course of the video. But this thing's howling, this is bad. And I just want to chuck a question out there to you guys during the course of the video. We go through the usual steps with pre-wash, decontamination, but there is a problem with it, and I want to hear your thoughts on it. Do you use fallout remover before you pre-wash, or do you use pre-wash before you fall out? Think about it, all right? And we'll discuss it later on, right at the end of this video. Meanwhile, put the kettle on, go and grab another lens sip, and roll the video. So here we go then, while the wife is not looking, my lovely wife, we're going to get a car down on the drive. Why are we doing it on the drive again? Well, I'm trying to dilute Fox's wee. Yes, there's got to be an easier way to dilute Fox's wee. I don't know, is there? Can't be as much fun as doing one of these, surely. Unless, of course, I catch the fox. Hmm, that'd be interesting. Back to the story. So we have organic matter on the front of the car. On the sides of the car, we have mechanical, i.e. brake dust. And no, this car has not been sat in a station car park. Somebody mentioned that on Instagram. I happen to work in the railway industry, and I've never seen the brake dust like this on any of the vehicles in the depot. Anyway, back to the story. We have garage therapy decon shampoo, zero, and acid wheel cleaner from Auto Glim. Auto Smart Red 7 with fallout remover. They're the chemicals so far. As ever, we've got the stubby gun on the Arva Smart P60. I believe there's some stock issues with Arva machines. I've been asked several questions about Arva, and it's gone a bit quiet, to be honest with you, at the moment, because they are suffering from stock issues. As soon as I know more, and I'll get another machine in, I'll let you guys know. Don't panic. So we're gonna try and blast as much of this stuff out as possible. And there is a lot of brake dust on these rims. I'm going to go with the IK sprayer, thanks to Johnny Shield Detailing for sending this one down, and the sprayer 2, or foamer 2, should I say. So in the background, I'm going to apply the acid wheel cleaner. Around about a 1 to 6 ratio, very, very strong, this stuff. Wear gloves when you apply it. It's not the most polite chemical in the world. Once the chemicals have been allowed to dwell, you can then start going in with your tools. I've actually got a new tyre scrubbing brush from Carscope. I'll feature that on the channel very soon. So get asked, easy brushes or wheel woolies? Well, we're going to use a mixture. And you'll find out why in a moment. It's down to the brake caliper. Go for the smallest one first. See if we can get that one in there. Uh -uh. Bit of a fail, that one, Paul. So no real excuses. Bust out the smaller easy brush, or EZ if you'd like. Agitate the wheel cleaner around the brake caliper so you can get right behind it. Get in around the barrel as far as you can go. And things should start moving. And if you want to get really hands-on, grab yourself a microfiber and get your hands around the spokes and you can get right in there. But wear gloves. During the course of the video, I take my gloves off, obviously because I'm operating two cameras. Cameras don't like wet. Mm. And if you're going to use a detailing brush, make sure it's a chemical resistant brush. That is a garage therapy chemical resistant brush, still going strong. Then we're gonna apply the Red 7. This is the fallout remover. Now this should light up like a Christmas tree, even on the black rim. So once you've allowed this to dwell, 
you can then go in with your brushes and you can see a little bleeding out there from the brake area, the brake caliper. Make the most of your tools. If you've got one of these, this is the larger of the two of the Vicam brushes. It's got a soft tip around it. You won't scratch anywhere. It's not hard plastic, but these are very, very durable brushes. Then you can rinse off. So moving around to the organic matter, the pre-wash. Very strong ratio this, one to six or one to eight, whatever it was on the day. All I can say is it smelled, it was strong. A word of warning when you're using one of these sprayers, make sure you adjust that nozzle. If you have it on a jet or too much of a jet, you will literally rinse through chemicals in minutes. They are very, very efficient these. They dump chemical on vehicles very, very quickly. So after a good 10 minutes, quick re-maneuver of cameras we're going to start pre-washing and yes he still has the towing eye because it's a track car so initially not too bad but we have so much brake dust on this car it is going to play havoc with the pre-wash see what I mean look closely underneath the number plate now this has nothing to do with the chemical, it's still got bonded contaminants on the car. So should I have gone in with a fallout remover first? Hmm, more about that at the end of the video. So on the front of the car being organic matter, not brake dust obviously, unless he's right behind someone and going down the straight, not a problem, comes off easy. However, on the sides of the car, look closely. And that's what we wouldn't normally expect on a non-tracked car. On an everyday car, it'll just fall off. The bonnet, however, yeah, not too bad. So this is the bit we've all been waiting for. This is the Red 7 fallout remover. So a liberal spray of this, coating the car. So we want to give this as long as possible without drying out. So this was after around five minutes. Watch, it gets worse. So don't do this in the sun. It will dry out and it will just go all streaky. I don't know what's going on with that door. Very, very patchy. Very odd. So have a look at the seal section right down the bottom and there is some sort of a patch on the door maybe it's down to my haphazard spray technique i'm not too sure it was a little bit streaky it's obviously going to require another hit but we are going to do that in a different way now obviously around the light cluster he's got rust issues going on minis are prone to this apparently 
nothing we can really do about that. You can actually see it running out of the doors. And door shuts, really? Some sort of a patch on that door. I don't know what it is. Is it a target? Oh, I don't know. So although this made a big improvement, it wasn't the end. Still got to get rid of those finger marks. Shampoo stage. Now this is Dodo Juices Born to be Mild. So after re-coating the car again, if you look at the bottom of the picture with the red seven, it started to bleed again. So the chemical reactions happened. We are now going to use the lubricants of the shampoo to go over the car. Remember, it's been dissolved. Don't worry about this swirling up. It's not going to. It's already dissolved the metal particles in the clear coat. Now, if you check out the last video we did with the Suzuki, this was something that Terry did. The pro detailer I happen to work with, he does this a lot. He actually pushes the chemical around the car. Whoa, what's going on here? Metro bomb, still here. Once we've done this, it was back to rinsing out the door shut and rinsing out the car again, rinsing it off rather. And then already you can see a change in the color of the car. It started to look a bit more white rather than well, yellowy grey. So all the time I'm doing this, I had a friend visit me, Paul from Detailing Reviews, and he has a website with a shop and I'm going to link some products to that. You can go and check him out and give him some support on his YouTube channel as well. Look, there he is. There's his van in the background. So after a quick drying session with the towel, that's a mild deep towel, by the way. Paul got this out, yes, Hulk. He got his blower out. It's actually quieter than my one from Big Boy. So I'll let him do this. And yes, there is a trim missing from the front of that bumper. If you want one of these blowers, I'll put a link below the video. So once this was done, we move on to the wax stage. This is Poxy by 3D. And we're gonna apply it with machines. Two of us ended up doing this. Spider foam pad. So I'll let Paul do this bit, the first one. Apply three or four dots of wax and then literally spread the product around. You're not correcting, you're not polishing. All you're doing is applying a wax. The reason you use a machine, it applies a nice, even layer. You can just about make it out on the wing there. It's thin for the wind. You don't need a lot. So prime up the pad, three or four dots, and you're good to go. How much wax do you need? Well, that should give you at least enough wax to do a panel. You can actually see it when you do it. It's quite difficult, I know, with the sun and the camera. You can actually see it being spread across the panel. 
once you've done that panel, move on to the next one. Now, you don't have to worry about buffing this off quick. You want to give this at least 20 minutes. And many of you will be looking at this going, hang on a minute, why haven't you taped up that trim? No need. This stuff does not mark. Nothing worse than wax residue on trims or compound residue even. So just a light pressure and then maneuver the polisher around, making sure you cross hatch it, get everywhere you can. Once you've done this, all you got to do is buff it off. That's the easy bit. Simple, isn't it? Interestingly enough, no tar spots on this car. Just an awful lot of fallout. And it's very easy to buff off. It's not like a paste wax. This is very, very easy. Nothing worse than a grabby wax. Don't forget the mirror pods. So next up, we notice that the headlights were a little bit cloudy, not the best. So this is the correcting compound. It's actually a finishing polish, believe it or not. So medium pad from Valet Pro, up to speed two. Don't have to go any quicker than that. And then you just buff away. I wasn't expecting too much from this, to be honest with you. However, it does reveal a much clearer lens. No need to wet sand those. And it brought the chrome up nice as well. And of course, recoated that in wax and we were done. Next up, trim care. So this is a water-based trim sealant or rejuvenator, if you like. Minis are prone to these, going faded and nasty. The rears aren't too bad. Around the fronts, ugh, they're not good. So it's like a gel-like formula. Apparently you can't use this on tires. Well, you could do, but it is very, very gloopy, very sticky stuff. Allow this to dwell, leave it on for a while, let it dry out, and then just buff it off. What I did notice the next day, it was still on there. It didn't fade, which is unusual. Next up, last but not least, is Garage Therapy's Tire Serum. Helps seal up the tires, ready for the next excursion. Here's some before and after shots, and I will meet you back in my lounge. Well, not physically. There you go. Wow. See you in a bit. This weather wants to make its mind up. The sun's gone in. Right, what do we think about the Mini? What do we think about the 3D stuff? I mean, we've used the Auto Glim stuff before. We've used Auto Smart. Uh, if you haven't checked out the videos, check them out. There's a back catalogue of videos. I do apologise for not being here. I can't help being ill. Man flu. Um, anyway, wheels. So, the wheels I thought were actually going to turn out better than they actually did. One of them is the driver's side. Now, this happens to be maybe down to cornering, body weight, Sean's a big guy, you know, going around tracks. 
Um, I don't know. Strangely enough, opposite corners of the car, so near side and then offside rear, seem to come out the best. Very, very strange. But we've still got this encrusted brake dust, which is really bad. I mean, if you're talking about dwell times with Red 7 and acid wheel cleaner and they still don't come up, we've got a few issues, haven't we, going on. Same when it comes to pre-wash. Now, the question is, do you look at the car knowing it's been around track and just go straight in with a fallout remover, or do you do the usual steps and give the chemicals a chance and then go in with your pre-wash? I mean, a very, very strong pre-wash as well. This is something like, I don't know, it was like one to six, you know, decon shampoo. Paul from uh, Detail Reviews that turned up said, I can smell it from here. It was that strong. On the front of the car, stripped everything. But as you know, brake dust gets dumped on the sides of the vehicle. It goes like a vortex up the sides and then gradually works its way around the back of the car and it gets dumped on the arse end. This car is that bad. One thing I didn't show you and I should have done was actually the door shuts. Where the crease is, where it comes down from the lock mechanism that goes around like that, that started rusting up. Now, I don't mean body work wise, it started to to rust, it's actually all the brake dust, it's, it, you know, it's just encrusted, so I ended up putting fallout remover in the door shuts, it was that bad. Um, but we got there in the end, and then we went in with a two bucket wash using the Dodo Juice shampoo, born to be mild. Now, once that chemical reaction's happened, you can then go in with, you know, your wash media. There was a comment on the last video saying, surely you're gonna swell the paint up or the clear coat. No, because the actual chemical reaction has happened already and it's already dissolved the metal particles. All you're doing is going with a lot of lots and lots and lots of suds and lubricants and then just washing the car like you would normally. So don't worry about that. Don't get too hung up about that. And this is a track car at the end of the day. You know, it's not a garage queen. Shampoo is excellent. Rinse the car down, dried it off. Now, no QDs. Um, no drying aids, nothing at all. Uh, we did polish the headlights, uh, as I noticed they were a little bit, uh, weren't great, were they? And that's with the 3D1 cutting compound finish, finishing polish. Finishes down really nicely, got to about speed two, don't have to go any faster than that. And it brought them up lovely. Um, now when it comes to the wax, you're gonna apply this up to speed two again, you're only spreading a wax, you're not polishing a car, don't worry. There's no, it's not a glaze. Uh, they do do glazes, by the way. Um, I have got some bits and pieces to try from detailing reviews from Paul, and a big shout out to him for coming down, give me a hand with this mini. I didn't expect it, and he ended up staying for the afternoon, poor sod, and <laughs> working on the car with me. But it, it was really good fun. As I've mentioned last in the last video, working with your friends on cars is just, it makes things so much better. It's a good laugh as well. Anyway, the wax, this poxy wax. No, it is called poxy, it's not poxy wax. Uh, a Montan-based high gloss wax. Long lasting protection. So, um, they reckon six months. You know, on a fully prepped car, machine polished car, decontaminated car, you're gonna get six months. Use it on a machine, honestly, so much easier. Saves your arms, you get a better finish. It's thin for the win. You don't need a lot of this, three or four, spots on a pad, I used a spider pad, that was from 3D. Spread it over the car, let it cure for at least 20 minutes, give it 20 minutes. Gonna put the kettle on, you know, gonna make a brew and come back, do a panel at a time, you don't have to keep loading up the pad, don't saturate the pad. You know, one set of dots on the pad will do like a door, you know, you don't need a lot of this stuff. So it goes really, really well. Uh, and then buff it off with a microfiber and it's, it's there, lovely gloss, restored the finish, it looked great. Obviously we haven't compounded it, excuse me, itchy nose. I mean, he's gonna get a surprise, better do the lottery. Um, I don't know where that come from, I really don't. <laughs> and then, yeah, did all that, and then it was on to tires and the trim. Now, I don't have the trim stuff here, because that was uh, from Paul, but I'm gonna get some of that from 3D. I believe that's a water-based one. Very similar to Car Pro Pearl, very, very easy to apply. It's a bit gloopy, a bit thick. You don't want to put it on tires. Apparently it's a bit sticky on tires. So I switched to the Gary Therapy Tire Serum on the tires, got that lovely finish. The car wasn't picked up for at least three days. It gave everything a chance to settle down and Sean was blown away by it and he's really, really chuffed. And the one thing I've said to him is don't leave it so long next time anyway. Sorry it's been such a long wait in between videos. Um, numerous things going on outside my control. 
please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Stick your thumbs up. Get involved in the comments section because that's where it's at. We like to discuss things. Keep them nice and sensible and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Ta-ra. Now where's that lem sip? Oh.